when we when we mix plaster it is a mix one to one and i would always start with a sort of a a, a third water in the bucket yeah a third of water in the bucket is a good start yeah and there are various ways to mix plaster i know and um annie in in the ceramics department they they always use this this spoon i am not sort of big fan of the spoon i'm much more sort of old school when it comes to mixing plaster for one specific reason you want to have plaster that is lump free yeah so you do not want to have any lumps and you should do that if you use this one it's fine but you definitely need to mix it before yeah so this is plaster make sure these bags come with an inner bag and an outer bag and I absolutely hate it if students um, just kind of go in and then when the lower it gets, it sort of gets all tangled up and you can't access the plaster. So please fold the inner bag onto the outer bag that you have nice access to the bag. Yeah. So you need good access to the bag. The next thing I do is I actually mix it with my hand inside. Yeah. That it's nice because you get lumps in there and you want to avoid that. Okay, so that is nice and fluffy. You can sort of feel it's nice and fluffy. And then we need another tool. That's also something I probably differentiate from. Where do we have our angles? Yeah. A trowel, essential tool for mixing plaster. Yeah, a trowel. I have I have made trowels with slightly slightly around the edges. I need to grind these off. So this is for mixing. You want to keep your hands dry. Yeah, the hands need to keep dry. Do not go into the plaster until you start working with the plaster. Don't mix the plaster with your hands. Mix it with a trowel. Okay. So. Now, how do we figure out that we have enough plaster? So we bring the plaster. I always have big hands, big, form your hands like, you know, like a big shovel. And now it's already nicely mixed in there and you bring it to the water. And don't just drop it. You just kind of rinse it quickly through. You need to work quickly now. In and just kind of spread it onto the surface of the water. Yeah. Now, when you read it up, it always says, wait until you have islands on the surface. You think, oh, islands, finished. I can start mixing it. No, 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 no. It still goes down. You can see it, it still goes down. You want to have more. And this is where the secret lies. You need a little bit of experience with the plaster. And also, you need the sort of a little bit of patience. So you see there are islands. This might be already enough, but it isn't. So the only thing you can do is you take your little pinky and kind of just test it. And you can sort of feel, oh, there's a surface coming. It's a little bit harder, like a little bit, one inch down. So what you can spread, so this is definitely not enough plaster in there. Need a little bit more. And this is probably pretty good. And you also now realize why you need an overall. <laughs> yeah. What I do is take the trowel, spread it. I hit it sometimes. This is pretty good. This will be a good plaster because it's sort of saturated now. And you just kind of go with the edge of the, of your trowel, spread it. pretty good and now you go in you can hold it with one hand and just whisk it like this not that you splash too much but you mix it and this is 
where I differentiate greatly from when you learn it in the um, in the ceramics department, they tell you to kind of go in with your hands. I don't like that. Um, I want to keep my hands clean until I start working. Also, the problem is you bring different, uh, you want to keep the temperature there even. I mean, it's it, here it is okay, but when you work in colder temperatures, you bring your warm hands in, you, the plaster will start hardening in and around your hands and all of a sudden you have huge lumpy hands full of plaster, you cannot work. You need to keep your hands clean. Huh? So this plaster is good now and you can sort of feel it. This is nice and, yeah, it's, it's good. Has no lumps. Perfect. Right, put this away for demonstration reasons. Oh, hold on. We, let's go to a place where we can actually work. Little tools away. So we want to. Let's say this is your inner structure. You might have covered it already with chicken wire. Okay. Now, let's, let's assume this is small areas like this. If you want to make a little, a little head sculpture, you can just do it like this. So, you take your strips and you bring them in. Yeah? You squeeze them in. Now, you bring it out. This is a good saturated piece of cloth. Many students think, oh, I need to, I don't know. They go like this and clean it. That's the worst thing you can do. You want as much plaster as possible on this. So you bring it in, you, you pull it through. Could you please bring me a board there? There's a board, that wooden board behind the shelf. Take it, put this here, otherwise you're gonna make a huge mess. Okay. Okay. So, now you have your saturated piece of cloth. Start shaping this up. So imagine this is now much bigger. This is obviously just a small I work usually from, you know, you always continue from your previous sack cloth. It's a very small object to cover here. To make sure, because what you, what you usually use this, what, you apply this to chicken wire. Imagine you have a bigger body there's your wire structure inside, you cover it with chicken cloth, and you want this to stick to the chicken wire as good as possible, yeah? So you need plaster on these, on these sack cloth in order to kind of stick to the chicken wire. If your, if your plaster is too thin, you literally just get a milky layer, and this will not stick onto the chicken wire. It will just kind of lie on top. You want layers of plaster to stick on kind of almost like surround the entire chicken wire yeah that it's sort of squeezing onto it you can sort of see it when 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 you have a wrong mix you sometimes have to rip the whole thing off again yeah so and this is also a stage when you work with plaster where it sort of gets malleable but obviously this is a very small object to cover. Now let's make a little... You, you can sort of see that the plaster is already starting to kind of get a little bit harder. And the beauty of plaster, when you get experience with working with plaster, the plaster in here is still very soft. It's almost liquid. The moment you use it, it, it starts to harden up much quicker. So plaster that has, has been used, has been moved around, tends 
to harden quicker. So from one batch, you can go through various stages, which is a very, very useful thing to be able to do. Because the object is already hard, but you still have plaster to go. Yeah? So you need to stage it right. You need to kind of get a feel for when the plaster is going. Yeah? And then the plaster, when it's you can see this is already getting quite hard and in and this is where you some so we just need to wait a lot of working with plaster means waiting waiting for the right moment and when it starts to get hard it goes very quickly it literally goes like from very soft to being almost rock hard and then you I have seen so many students wasting so much plaster because they just thought oh I don't know I've got to quickly have a drink you know just half a minute they come back after a minute and the plaster is rock so they clean their back yeah so this is this seems to be a very good plaster if you have older plaster sometimes it goes really really quickly but you can also see now Let's say you have a big surface. This is also the moment. I couldn't do this five minutes ago, where you can apply the plaster. And I usually, but that's only for those who then are a bit more experienced. I actually like to apply it with a trowel. And, and that's a very, very important thing. Do not work the plaster too hard once you applied it. All you need to do is, you need to bring it to the surface and leave it. The problem with plaster is if you apply it, it's a kind of a funny material. So it kind of sticks some of it running down, but the moment you start to manipulate it, the whole thing runs down again because it liquefies again when you move it. So with plaster, there's the motto, Stick it on and leave it for a bit. Stick it on only once and leave it. Stick it on and leave it. Here's the back. Stick it on and leave it. So, let's see, perhaps we can fill this out. I don't know, I mean, it's in a funny shape. The thing is, that's what happens when you actually start working with material. You just weld something up, then you fill it with plaster, and, and you think, oh, it's kind of you know, interesting. You know, it might be a, that might be a maquette to something, yeah? And that's the beauty of working with materials. You can't pre-think these forms. These forms just happen in the process of making. Yeah? And that's the beauty of really working with material. Material give you, give you information you cannot preconceive somehow. You need to discover them along the way. And now you can see. This is already quite hard. Yeah? This is really now getting seriously malleable. I usually, if I work on a board, I would need to insulate this with a bit of wax because otherwise it sticks so hard that So yeah, it can be an, an incredibly messy. And literally, I mean, I worked an awful lot uh, with plaster as a student. And when I was working, we made big figurative work and so huge molds. I literally, I didn't, I didn't have hands like this all day. All I did, I was working with the trowel and just kind of bring it on. Um, so, but you can also see now, this is now a stage where the plaster is just right to model with. This is almost like modeling clay now. And here I really prefer to work with a trowel because the problem is, now you can see, the plaster on the hand is already almost crackling up. It's almost hard. And if I go in here and I sort of start, you always end up with totally messy hands. 
Yeah, and I hate that. So I much rather work with a trowel and I can bring all my material on and I can work quite precisely with this here. Look, this on the top is already hard. So what is this, a little, a little igloo of snow hut or something? And you can just make it up as you go along. So yeah, working with the trowel is just gives you a, a little bit better control and you can get the, I think we have quite a number of these ones dotted around, um, but students find it in the beginning a little bit awkward working with plaster and they think, oh, I need to kind of get my hands in and then, and then it just ends up in a huge, huge mess. Whereas, you know, if you work, you know, work with tools sometimes it's just a better method so I mean whatever this is you know you just to get the gist You can make a sculpture fairly, fairly quickly with this method. And you can build volume up really, really quickly. Okay, I think stop.